In today's video, I'll show you how to blur faces like this using a custom mask. To skip ahead in the tutorial, look for the time codes in the description below. I've got a clip loaded on my timeline. The first thing I'm going to do is edit the clip by slicing up the footage. I'll scrub to the point where Monique looks directly at the camera, right about there, then I'll make a cut and delete the first part of my footage. Now I'll review the clip slowly once more and take note of how Monique moves her head. I won't be doing any keyframing in this tutorial, so I need to minimize the amount of movement that you can see. I also want to make the clip as short as possible so that it renders out quickly and my screen recorder does not fail. This is a clip I shot specifically for this tutorial. Normally, if there was more movement in a clip, you might need to do some keyframing, but because of the way I set this up, I won't need to. I'm gonna make another cut here and delete the footage. And I'll do one more. I'll make the cut and then delete the footage to the right. Next, I'll double tap the clip to open the clip editor. I'll tap on color and effects. I'm going to apply a high contrast filter. It looks like this. If you're unsure about which settings to adjust, like I am, just play around with them until you get something that looks good to you. I recommend that you set all of the settings at the white notches because those are the recommended settings for your clip. Once you're happy with how your clip looks, tap the back arrow to go back to the main timeline. Next you need to duplicate your clip to make a copy of it. I'm going to place the copy of my clip on top of the original. Press and hold on your duplicated clip and drag it over top of your original. Double tap the clip on the top, tap frame and fit, and then go into cropping. I need to adjust this crop so that it surrounds Monique's face. But notice that the crop lines, the yellow lines on screen, will form a square. But a face is round. Once you've got your crop lines set, you can back out of the clip editor, tap on the presets icon, and then choose preset blur. Notice that Monique's face is now blurred out. However, the corners are square. I'd like the shape of the blur to be round. To accomplish this, I'm going to build a custom mask. Since LumaFusion has no masking capabilities as of the recording of this video, I'll tap on the trash can to delete that clip and make another duplicate. I'll tap the duplicate icon and then place my duplication on top of the original like this. Notice that they are exactly the same length. Make sure that your upper clip is exactly the same length as your lower clip. Tap on the plus sign. And make sure that the overlay title is exactly the same length as your other two clips. Now I'll double tap my overlay title to open the clip editor. And I'm going to tap on the title icon, the T, in the middle of the main toolbar. I'll select the text and delete it. Tap the plus sign and choose shape. Scroll down and choose the oval. This is the closest thing LumaFusion has to a circle. With the circle selected, use the handles to make the oval into a circle like this. Next, you'll want to bring the opacity down to below 50% so you can see through it. Then I'll place it over Monique's face like this. And now I need to play the clip to make sure that Monique's face does not come outside of the circle at any point. I love Mike's videos. Please subscribe to his channel for more tips, tricks, and I'll tutorials. I'll adjust it as needed 
This part of the process can be the most time consuming. If you don't get this just right, then your blur will not look proper. So take your time and get it as close to perfect as you can. If you need more help adjusting the shape of your circle, you can use the sliders provided. When you think you've got it, back out of the clip editor and go to the main timeline and play your clip once more. I think I need to make one more adjustment. I'll make the circle a little bigger by double tapping on the top clip. I'm going to take two fingers and spread them apart to make the circle bigger so that it surrounds Monique's head. Use the handles on the side to make sure that it's as close to the head of your subject as possible. That looks better. Now I'm going to change the face color to green. That looks even better. I need to go back into the clip editor and increase the opacity of my circle to 100% so that it's a solid color because I'm going to key it out later. Next I'll tap on add layer and then add a shape, a rectangle. Move the rectangle above the circle so that when I resize the rectangle to cover the rest of the screen, I don't move my green circle. Take two fingers, place them on screen, and spread them apart to resize the rectangle. When you apply a blur, it covers the entire video. This video is square. Change the face color from white to blue so that I can key it out later. You can use any color you want, but I'm going to use blue because LumaFusion has a built-in blue screen key. That's also the reason I made the video black and white. There is no blue or green in my video. When you choose the colors for your shapes, make sure these colors do not appear in your video. Otherwise, the chroma key operation may not work properly. I'm going to tap on color and effects, tap on the chroma key icon, and select the green screen key to remove the green circle. Now, I'm left with just Monique's face. I can go back into the clip editor, tap on color and effects, tap on the teardrop and choose a blur. I'm going to use Gaussian 20%. Now the blur has been applied and I can render this clip out and save it to my photo roll. So I'll tap on the export icon, tap movie, and save it to my photos. There's my new clip. If I tap on it, you'll see that it looks exactly the same as what's in my timeline now. So I can select the clip in my timeline and delete it. Notice that the blur I applied was applied to this entire photo. So I'll select that clip and delete it as well. This will leave me with just my original photo which is exactly what I want. I'll take the clip that has my mask and place it over top of my photo. Then I'll double tap that clip to open the clip editor, tap on the chroma key icon, and choose the blue screen key. The blue screen will be removed. That looks good, but it could be better. So I'll adjust the settings of the blue screen key Back to the white notches because these are the recommended settings for my video. I'll play the clip one more time to take a look at the final result before I export it. That looks great. So I'll tap on the export icon in the bottom right corner. I'll choose movie. And I'll save it to my photo roll. I'll choose photos. Because this is a short clip, the export shouldn't take long. If you need more information on how to use keyframes, check out the video in the cards on screen now. Here's the final clip. Let's have a look at it. That looks great. Notice that the blur is round instead of square. For more great tutorials like the one you just saw, check out the links in the video description or one of these recommended videos.